Hello, Jesse Good here. Today we're taking a look at the Lego Minifigures Disney Series 2, which has 18 minifigures in total, which we'll take a look at each one individually. It retails for $4, where it releases May 1st, 2019. So our first minifigure is Classic Mickey, based on the original Steamboat Willie cartoon that Mickey Mouse first appeared in. This design is actually different from the recently released Steamboat Willie Lego Mickey Mouse figure. The design of this one has white on the pants and on the shoes, as well as on the hat, the top is black, while the one to the right here is the one in the Steamboat Willie set. And you can see that this one uses a silver design where you have silver on the shoes, the pants, and the top of the hat. I prefer the one to the right here because it just looks visually interesting, though neither are particularly inaccurate. It just really takes a look at which way you view the colors of the particular cartoon Steamboat Willie where it was in a very grayscale design. Other than that though, his ship wheel accessory is a pretty interesting inclusion since it only comes in that color in the Steamboat Willie set, which is the $90 set. This is a $4 minifigure. And there is a new piece for this hat top, which does just connect to the existing piece they used for Mickey Mouse's minifigure head. And it just uses a peg connection there. It's a really well-made piece in my opinion. Our next minifigure is Classic Mini. To go along with Classic Mickey, this is also based off the Steamboat Willie cartoon. The design of this also has a very similar situation where the set version is a little bit different from this version present. This is the set version to the left, and you can see the one in the CMF series has just a regular gray skirt while the set version has a silver skirt and silver shoes. Also, the top of the hat on the set version has a nice silver shine to it while this one just goes with a white. Again, just different interpretations, and both are fine. My favorites are the ones from the Steamboat Willie set, though, because the silver is really cool. Her accessory is actually much blander than Mickey Mouse's. I wish they went with something a little bit more uncommon. And her headpiece works a lot like Mickey Mouse's, where we do have this new piece right here for this hat that just attaches to the top of the existing Minnie Mouse headpiece, which is also, I guess, the Mickey Mouse headpiece as well. Oh, and once you remove the skirt, you can get a better look at the legs, which do have some nice printing on it and dual molding in general. Our next minifigure is Huey, who has a new headpiece as well as a new hat piece. And this is used for all three of the duck triplings in this series, which the hat is a hard plastic that just connects to the top with that little connection. Other than that, though, removing the hat, you can get a better look at just the shaping of this, which is a little bit different from, say, the Donald Duck headpiece or the Scrooge McDuck headpiece, which we'll get to in a little bit. Though they all use the same tail piece here, and there's some nice dual molded short legs, which are always useful and we don't see too often. Also, he probably has the most interesting accessory of his brothers, which is the Junior Woodchuck's Guide, which does have a printed part at the front for this newer book piece. And then on the inside, there's a printed one by two tile. Next is Dewey and yeah, same pieces as Huey, except new color for them, which is blue. And the accessory is different, which is just a regular slingshot piece. Would have wished they did a more unique color or something like that. And finally, there's Louie, which again, same pieces as Huey and Dewey, except different colors as well as a different accessory, which is this flashlight. A very simple build and probably the least interesting of the three's accessories. Here is Scrooge McDuck, probably my favorite minifigure of this series. I just love how they interpreted this character into Lego form. There's a new piece for his head piece, as well as his hat up here, which does have a little connection at the top of this hole. This is going to be really useful because I see a lot of people trying to put top hats on characters with that whole connection. Now the design of the tail is also super impressive because it's a tail piece, but it has it colored in the middle so that it looks like it's blue in the middle section. So it doesn't look like there's any obnoxious like white color between his torso and his legs. Love how they did the leg design as well with so many different colors and so many different interpretations. It just looks perfect in my opinion. Also, he has his lucky number one dime as an accessory, which is just a classic Scrooge McDuck thing, and I like that they have a new print for that. And his little cane right here, I wish was a little bit more specific in its piece, but we already got two new pieces with this figure, so maybe I'm being a little bit too greedy there. But yeah, this is a fantastic figure in general. Next is Chip, and the design of this has an exclusive headpiece and a new torso print. On the back, I don't like how the torso print looks where they just use 
a 2D print for a, what should be a 3D tail, in my opinion, since the duck tails are all 3D. I guess Mickey Mouse and Minnie's tails aren't really present on the figures, though. The design also uses mid-legs in reddish-brown, which is a new color from my understanding for those pieces and extremely useful. Finally, his accessory is this acorn right here, which is a really good build. It uses a mandrake base as well as the stamp piece, as I call it, at the top, and it looks perfectly like an acorn. That was really clever without making any new pieces. Next up is Dale, and he has a different headpiece from his brother with slight variations in general. The design of this also has a really nice nougat color, which I like getting the mid legs in that color. Other than that, though, same problem with Chip, where it's a 2D printed tail at the back, which looks a little bit off. And his accessory is a sack of nuts, which is just a recolor of the trash bag piece in brown. Next up, we go to the world of Frozen with Elsa. The design of this uses a new hair piece, which is actually different from the one in the mini doll versions from Disney Princess. I like this design better, though both have the same problem of being a rubber hair piece that doesn't fit on too well because rubber in general seems to not have the perfect fit for Lego mini figureheads. Love the detailing on the side of the arms, uh, the torso, and the newer dress piece, which look great, as well as my favorite part, which is this cape right here. What a beautiful pattern. It is a single hold cape, so I think that's better than having the ones that fold over. Also, the back has some great printing as well. And her accessory is this snowflake piece, which is good to get in a cheap $4 set. Oh, and I almost forgot, she has an alternate face, which is actually a case with a lot of the regular minifigure heads in this series, but they all have alternate expressions. This one, she's winking, which is something that she shares with her sister, and you'll see that in a little bit. Which, for her sister Anna, this is another great figure in my opinion, regardless of your opinions on the Frozen film, with a new hairpiece. Again, it's rubber, so it's not the perfect fit, but still works. The new dress piece as well has some great printing on it. And you can't really see her torso, and we'll get a better look at that in a second. But there's this little cape here, which is a really well-made fabric. I like just the shaping of it in general. And there's some back torso printing. Her accessory is this little lantern here. Not using any new pieces, but it is a fairly new piece in general from last year, which is from the Harry Potter line. And she does have an alternate face, which, like I said, she's winking, just like her sister Elsa had. And if you take that cape off in general, you can get a better look at the torso, which has a really nice pattern to it. The first Disney CMF series had Aladdin and Genie. This one has Jafar and Jasmine, and I really like the design of both of these characters. In Lego form, they have a new headdress piece for Jafar, which is really well made. I just love the coloring and what seems to be dual molding of it, and the printing on the front in general. Also, we have the newer dress piece, as we call it. Also, this front torso printing, not a new piece for the staff or the shoulder pad piece, or as we like to call it, the Jafarmer. The design of this cape right here also is a new cut, which I love the fabric shaping of this. This will be very useful with printing on the back and on the inside where we have two different colors. We do have some back torso designs and an alternate face as well, where Jafar does not look pleased. Next up is Princess Jasmine, who uses a nice azure base for the torso and the legs, I see a lot of people complaining about that, but I kind of understand why Lego did that. If they didn't do it, it would look like her little top up here is just floating, and it would be more of a flesh base, I guess. There's also some side arm printing, which I really like, which is just an expansion of her dress in general. This hair piece, though, is not a new piece. I originally thought it was, but it's actually the same piece they use for the mini dolls, where it's just this hard rubber. I don't know, I don't really like it, because again, hard rubber makes it harder to fit on a minifigure. And this one would have been probably been better if it was a hard plastic. Another problem with her is that she doesn't have an alternate facial expression, which isn't really an excuse. I think the only other minifigure in this series with a regular minifigure head who doesn't have an alternate facial expression is Jack Skellington, which makes sense because there's no hair piece or anything to cover up the back of his head. Either way, she also has an accessory, which is this dove right here. This is actually a new piece. I don't think it was specifically made for this line, but it's nice to have it in here. I'm sure we will get more in the city line in summer 2019, but it's really useful in general. I always like getting new Lego animals. It just has an anti-stud at the bottom, so you can put on one stud or make it be held by a Lego minifigure like what's happening now. Next up is Hades, which I really like the design of. A lot of people don't like that face print, but he always had kind of a weird elongated face in the movie, so I don't really have a problem with it. Love this new leg piece though, which has some printing on it. And it's just really elaborate, really ridiculous and perfect for Hades in general. It actually connects onto four studs 
And then we have a design of the side arms, which look really crisp in their printing. I love how that happened with the dual molded sleeves as well. There's some back torso printing. And keep in mind that the headpiece for Hades isn't a new piece. It was used with the Ghost Rider minifigure and some other minifigures from other themes. So it's some nice part usage there, but it works perfectly. And I like the dual molding on it in general, where it does have that nice blue flame to it. Next up is Hercules, which the design I'm really fond of. This is probably one of my favorites of the series. I love this hair piece, which has that nice band printed all over it. Also a hard plastic headpiece, no rubber there, which is really useful. There's also a nice design for the shield right here, which is the round shield design. Also some new torso and leg printing, which I really appreciate because it captures that cartoony look from the movie. We do have some side arm printing, which is really useful. Also a foldable cape. I'm amazed they didn't go one hole like some of the other characters in this series, which you can see at the back, he does have some torso printing. And he has an alternate face in general where he looks a little bit more angry or ready to battle in a way. Our next minifigure is Sally, and I'm not super attached to the Nightmare Before Christmas movie, but my gosh, this might be the best figure in the series based on detailing alone, because she is so detailed. Look at the torso and the legs with all those different patterns, all those different colors, and then the side legs and arms of both, of which are dual molded, have even more great printing to it. And they're different on both sides, with this opposite side right here having different stitches, different colors, different patterns and whatnot. I love this minifigure, honestly. And she has an alternate face as well, which she looks really happy there. But of course, my favorite part of this figure is this new hair piece. It is a hard plastic and it's going to be super useful because it's just a hair design that we haven't gotten before in Lego. Other than that, though, her accessory is also really cool. I like the recolor of the Mandrake top, which look at that. There's two different colors for the Mandrake piece in this series, or I guess two different designs. And then we have a flower at the top of that as well. Very clever build without using any new pieces. Next minifigure is Jack Skellington from the Nightmare Before Christmas world, and the design of this has one new piece, which is this collar, but everything else has new prints to it, which love the detailing in the printing with some nice side arm and leg printing, some nice front leg and arm printing, whatnot, and also some back torso printing. He has some coattail design, which is a fabric, and a pretty cute little face at the front where he is pretty happy. Now, what's also included is this accessory of a present, which uses a new two by two printed tile design, a base present piece, which was introduced fairly recently. I forget which year though. Very nice pattern on there. And on the inside, there's two different designs for these little snowflakes, which you get extras of in this set as well. So if you get one figure, you'll get four on, in total of these one by one circular tiles. I like how those turned out. They look really cute. So we're down to the final two minifigures, and both are from Incredibles. This is Edna Mode. The design of this is interesting. It's a very interesting choice in general to put Edna Mode in here because her and Frozone are the only minifigures from any Pixar movies in this line. We only ever get minifigures for Pixar movies in what? Toy Story? Incredibles? What if like some different Pixar characters in general? There's so many other movies they could do. Either way, for Edna Mode, we also got Edna last year in a promotional poly bag. So that already makes it kind of a weak choice, but then again, this is a very narrowly released poly bag. This is a wide release set, so it's not too big of a problem. I don't know which one looks better though, because this doesn't look perfect and this doesn't look perfect. They get away with these big glasses, which are a very iconic part of Edna, by making a new hairpiece in general, where the glasses are literally molded onto it. But it looks kind of weird, because it's not like magnified pieces or like a, a see-through glass piece or, or clear piece. It's just printed on there, and it looks uncanny in a way, especially considering that the skin color on here is a different skin color than the one on the face. It's not intentionally supposed to be that way, but that's just how printing works on Lego sets, especially on a black piece. So it looks very odd in my opinion. Now, if you want, you could actually put that hair piece and glasses piece on the poly bag Edna mode. Kind of works, but you see a little bit of the glasses underneath there. Both do have different facial expressions where this one is a different kind of smile. This is more of a narrow smile. The opposite facial expression on the CMF version has more of a, I guess, a ticked off look. But this look, I think, is one of my favorites. I like the polybag look a lot better here. I wish I would have translated it onto this version. But once you put the hair piece over there, I guess that looks a little bit better. But still, it's not a perfect minifigure in my opinion. All right, I still got a few more things to say. This hair piece at the top does have a little connection, which you would think would be an accessory hole or something like that. 
but no, it's actually a little bit smaller than that. So you can't put accessories up there. So I guess it was a choking hazard thing. In my opinion, just make it an accessory hole so you would have a little bit more use for that. And she also has two accessories, which are this little shopping bag of Edna mode clothing design, which I like, and this uh, tea cup right here. This shopping bag piece is a one by two towel on a modified one by two plate with the handle. And I'm much more down with the inclusion of Frozen, who is our last minifigure, because this looks perfect. There's nothing going on with a hair piece or anything like that. He was a character missing from the Incredibles 2 sets as well, so it makes perfect sense to include him. And he's very popular in general. The design of the blue on him looks fantastic. I love that. And it's a very simple minifigure, but it just captures the character perfectly in my opinion. There's some nice clear power blast, which is the first time we're getting the power blast in clear, and they actually look really cool in that color. You just push that on here, and they kind of get launched. Also, we have this disc piece on the bottom, which is in gray, as well as a one by two jumper plate, and that just kind of uses the disc piece on top, and then you could put Frozen to kind of look like he's maybe skating on that plate on ice or whatnot. So I do have the display box for this, and this is a newer box size. I think they started this with the Lego Movie 2 series with the different sizes and whatnot. Also, we have just prints on the side that show all the minifigures and whatnot. Nothing too special here, but it is still a nice box design. And at the back, you just have some little copyright info and whatnot. So the blind bag for this series is that newer size that was introduced with Lego Movie 2. I don't know. I mean, I like the older size better, but change is okay. And this is the older design for Disney Series 1. You can see that this one has a lighter blue, which I initially thought they're the same color, but I'm glad they're a little bit different. Finally, the checklist is just your standard Lego minifigure checklist. Though it is funny that they have the little missile warning on there. And on the back, they just show different ways to build some of these minifigures. So overall, this minifigure series has ups and downs, as with any LEGO minifigure series. It's been three years since the last Disney series, and I think what they chose here is very satisfying. We have some redundant choices, like the triplets in Chip and Dale, which I get it, but I would have probably taken one group and put it for minifigure series three of Disney instead of putting them both in this one series, so it feels like a lot of wasted spots and similarities. There's some other odd choices, like the Edna design overall. But for the most part, I really appreciate the characters they brought here. Hercules, Hades, Frozone, Nightmare Before Christmas characters, Scrooge McFrickin' Duck, those I really love. And as a whole, I think this is great for people who don't really like Disney because there's some fantastic prints and pieces. Some of the best prints I've seen in a Lego minifigure series in general, where a lot of the minifigures with regular heads have alternate expressions, which I really appreciate. So yeah, I highly recommend this series. Go check it out. It's going to go off the shelf soon, just like Disney Series 1, which is really hard to find nowadays. But leave your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.